that I do admit that I was a bit, um, I had to Google a little bit to understand, was uh, Vivian Balakrishnan saying, uh, that's not on. That's not on. But apparently, it's a British informal slang or term for that's unacceptable. Is it? Yeah, that's not on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Vivian B, so, man. And before the next episode of the Yalabad podcast, here's a little message from Folklory. One big reason why we started Folklory is because we truly believe that everyone has a story. But not everyone gets a chance to share theirs, let alone have it preserved for generations. Especially for your parents who weren't able to record their lives on social media. Now, the sad reality is that they're not going to be around forever. But their stories can. So if you have a special someone in your life whose stories and memories you'd like to capture for yourself, your family, or even your kids in the future, how about a folklory? We make it super simple. We'll interview them over a phone call and turn that conversation into a studio-quality podcast that you or your loved ones can listen to whenever they like, forever. It'll also make for an extremely meaningful gift for someone's birthday or anniversary this April or May. And if you order by 31st March, you'll get your folklories delivered with this limited edition Bluetooth cassette, styled as a good old retro mixtape. How cool is that? So you can listen to them directly from this the moment you receive it. You can find out all the info you need at folklory.com and you can also chat with us directly on WhatsApp at the link in the show notes. So check it out, because we'd love to help you create something special. And now, on to the podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Ba, 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 ba. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terrence? Good old humor. Good old humor, man. Yeah. Good old humor. It yeah. is an uh, uh, interesting week so far. Been a busy couple of days, huh? Lots of stuff happening. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Like, uh, I mean, it's always nice like, when there's so many things in the news uh, mm. that we know we can talk about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's almost like we need, we, we, we don't have enough podcasts to capture all the news. Uh, yeah. I don't have enough time to process everything. This, yeah. Because everything is coming out like, wow, so many articles. It's just floods of like uh, videos, articles. Yeah. It's only that much one man can consume, like, right? Correct, correct. That's why we got two men. <laughs> two men here. Two men, yeah. And also, I just realized that like, um, uh, you're, you're, you, 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 there's something you want to l- let our listeners know about the coming weeks. Oh yeah. I'll be going away on vacation. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I'll be away for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Long one. Uh, but, but we're not stopping lah, right? Yeah, we're not stopping. Uh, because I think the Yalbat format, uh, people know what it is. Yeah. We have some, uh, great guests lined up and, uh, some pre-recorded guest episodes, but yeah. also some... Of the regulars coming back, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, some regulars, some new people. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it won't be it won't be quiet. Like, yeah. yeah. So I mean you're still gonna get your 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 fo- podcast where we talk about two topics. It's yeah. just not gonna be with Terrence. Like. Yeah. But we have done it before with like Rishi and Andy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we got some interesting people lined up. Yeah. Podcast will continue, the show will go on. Mm. Uh but yeah. You excited for your trip, like? Uh I mean you know how like every time just before you go to a trip, like yeah, it's... stuff happens. And then in our yeah. realm, our realm of current affairs podcast, all that. Yeah. So many exciting things came out early this week, like, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh god damn, we've only got one podcast to really talk about it, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it is what it is. We'll uh as a sign of the times, like, right? Like like just news cycle every week is just so much more things to talk about. Yeah. But I remember last time when I was going for a trip and before that I also was saying, Oh, you know, so many things to talk about. I remember yeah. you telling me, Hey, just shut up, lah, okay? Don't mm-hmm. make it seem like you're so hardworking. Just go and enjoy yourself and all. Yeah. But you're feeling it now, lah, right? I know about hardworking. I don't uh, want to work. I just want to like read all these articles uh, and just like talk about them. That's all. <laughs> but in some way that's our work, lah. You can say uh It's a nice it's a nice Nice, how you say, a cross what, between what you would want to do and our work. I believe that anyone who says that you never work a day in your life. Bullshit, la, yeah. yeah, it's bullshit. La, it's yeah, bullshit. yeah, correct. Yeah. So I don't even consider it work. La. I consider uh, it like just, like I said, cathartic like conversation. You read on the plane. I, la. I can read on the plane, la, but I mean, I'm there with a child also. You know, yeah. it's, it's difficult to, to really focus on things. Oh, uh, yeah, la, yeah. La. Uh, here's, here's easier. This is like our... Our enclave, our man our coliseum, our coliseum, coliseum yeah. where yeah, there's yeah. verbal debates, verbal uh. debates, and people are verbal listening and cheering us on. They want a bloodbath, you know. Oh uh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, the thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, mm. almost can't wait to get started on today's topics. Uh. Correct, correct. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but but the the I mean our regular things we must talk about the weather, uh, right? 
Correct. The weather right. has been still been freaking, freaking crazy. Hot, yeah. So yeah. And like, uh, I don't know whether it's just a coincidence that all these crazy things coming up when, you know, weather is so hot, lah, right? Mm. Everyone's temperature rising, reporters falling over each other and, and, and things like that. Lah. Cannot think straight. Lah. Yeah. Cannot think straight. <laughs> no, one, no one can think straight. Yeah, the point. heat is really, you wait at a traffic light, like, I mean, I know I've said this before, you wait at a traffic light, it feels like you're burning, but literally, it's it's hot. The, yeah. I think the hottest it's been this year, man. Yeah, yeah. And then like, it's literally, I don't feel lazy for saying oh I don't want to exercise outside now because it's like that hot because it really is like yeah, yeah. you could come back with a heat stroke at the end if you go and exercise outside right? uh, and it's funny there was this news uh, that uh, some researchers found that 1.7 kilometers mm. deep in Singapore temperatures oh. are hot enough to cook an egg uh. oh. so people are saying hey what the hell you just put it on the ground uh, out now in the sun you yeah. should be able to cook an egg yeah. I thought you were going to talk about another strand of research that, that apparently uh, hotter climates uh, lead to higher rates of infertility. In oh, that's true, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I think recently there was some research that came out and uh, they didn't ex- they, didn't, they didn't differentiate between tropical and non-tropical climates. Uh. Mm. So I'm like, we have heat all year round. Does yeah. it mean that we are just like boiling our but our innards? Uh? Isn't it a thing that like high temperature for a man's uh, private parts are not good for fertility? In general? Correct, correct. In general. But yeah. then if you live year round in a hot, country, does that explain our fertility, our birth rate dropping so low? You know, does that help to explain? I mean, yeah, it's probably one <laughs> reason. Somewhat related, la, right? Contributing factor, la. Yeah, probably yeah, not yeah. the biggest factor. Because can you imagine, like, then suddenly the rhetoric becomes, it's not about the stress, it's not about the high cost of living, it's yeah. too hot. Global yeah. warming is causing yeah. our fertility to go down. You know? Nothing to do with working too hard. And then someone will ask in parliament, how cold do you need to have children? How cold do you need it to be? To have sex. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, in a Auto small box can, now small, like, cold place Small can. ice box. Uh. Small, small ice box. box. <laughs> uh. But yeah, man. Cool. Oh, yes. Uh, before we, we jump into things, what is yeah. the regular plug, Terrence? Uh, if you're new here, please uh, consider subscribing or following wherever you're listening to this podcast or watching it. Uh, because that really helps us get uh, picked up by the algorithm. It trains the algorithm. What you're doing is training the algorithm to realize that, hey, people want to listen to this podcast. Mm. And it trains the algorithm to feed it to other people. And that's what's important to us, right? Yeah, man. And uh, if you want to work with us, uh, you want to do anything with us, you can check out all we do and reach out to us at our website, ministryoffunny.com. Yeah. There's all the details there. Uh, so yeah, holler. Yes. Cool, man. All right, let's uh, jump right into it. Huh? Let's jump right into it. Uh, uh, and what what has happened that, you know, is has put, again put Singapore on a, well, a bit, somewhat of a global map. Yeah, yeah somewhat global map. Yeah. Um, it was that uh, yesterday, 25th March, mm. uh, early in the morning, mm. uh, when uh, our home affair, law and home affairs minister, Shamugam, was at a breakfast uh, event. Uh, um, and he had a little doorstop interview where he talked about how there had been a post by the Israeli embassy uh, um, that was asked to be taken down. Mm. Uh, and it was something that he completely found unacceptable. Mm. Uh, and yeah, he made a very strict stance. Mm. Uh, I think now you can't, you can barely find a post anywhere. Yeah. I don't know, even Wake Up Singapore shared the post uh, but now when you go to the link, it says literally it's taken on because they complied with the legal request to take uh, from IMDA to take it down. No, Wake Up Singapore shared a screenshot of the post. Screenshot, even uh, that screenshot has been uh, taken down. Even that screenshot yeah. has been taken down. So, I mean, there's been a lot of chatter. And what, when you say global, yeah, like if you look, Arctic, like news outlets around the world have talked about this, mm-hmm. even on X. And generally, a lot of the non-Singaporeans are pointing out that, hey, this is, this is pretty baller, like, you know, that the ministry clamp down so fast on a post like this. Yep. Uh, but but yeah, like uh, this is interesting in many ways. Mm. Uh, but but what made you want to talk about it? Uh? Uh, I mean, it's it's global news. Mm. Singapore on the map again after mm. Taylor Swift. Mm. Uh, but the first thing I I did, uh, I do admit that I was a bit, um, I had to Google a little bit to understand, was uh, Vivian Balakrishnan saying, uh, that's not on. That's not on. Uh, that's not on. Yeah, that's what he meant by. That's how he expressed the the problem. His problem in the post. Do you hear the? Do you see the interview? I saw the interview, but I don't remember him saying that. What uh, is it? It's in the title of the YouTube video when he talks about it. That's not on. That's not on. Um, so, that's not on. Yeah, correct. So, okay. um, do, do you understand the meaning of that's no. not on? No. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, that's not on. Yeah, that yeah. is the title. Apparently. So I, I I looked it up. I was like, oh, who says uh, it's not on? It's not on. But apparently, it's a British informal slang or term for that's unacceptable. Is it? Yeah, that's not on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Vivian B, so, man. Today, today, Vivian Balakrishnan has taught us something new. About that's the English not language. on. That's not on. Yeah, it's not on, Harish. It's not on that you don't know what that so is on this. Actually, it makes sense. <laughs> because when you talk to someone who's a bit weird and all, you say, well, that guy's a bit off. Yeah. He's so he's not off. on. La. Last time when in the army, like I think up was like, a very cool thing yeah, to say. Yeah. Like, we were like, wow, up, la, up, la, you know. Yeah. Completely illogical, doesn't mean anything. But it just sounds uh, sounds cool, la, right? That's, that's not, not on. on. <laughs> but why can't he just say that's off? Oh, that's not un- that's unacceptable, right? Yeah, he just said that's not on. That's not on. Yeah. That's not on. I mean, that's not what... cool. It's like the maybe it's the diplomatic way of saying that's not cool. Not cool. <laughs> yeah, but you can't say that's not cool, like, you know. Uh, yeah, but I mean, in, in politics, they then they tend to never want to say something so negatively. Mm. Uh, they would say not untrue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, oh, it's kind of like, um, okay, that's not on. Wow. Yeah, that's New not on. thing for your dinner conversation <laughs> coming up. Um, but, but yeah, it was interesting how fast they reacted because right. literally, I mean, the post, like, you probably can find screenshots, but yeah. um, what it said was that Israel is mentioned 43 times in the Quran. On yeah. the other hand, Palestine is not mentioned even once. Mm-hmm. Each and every archaeological evidence, maps, documents, coins, link the land of Israel to the Jewish people as the indigenous people of the land. And then there were some hashtags, I think, stand up, stand with Israel and stuff like that. Mm. So mm. Shamugam kind of like uh, came out and said, yeah, that's uh, unacceptable for uh, a bunch of reasons. He said he was very upset. Um, it is insensitive and inappropriate. Uh, and like pointed out that, you know, they look after the safety of everyone in Singapore, majority and minorities, including Jews and Muslim, Muslims. Um, then he also talked about how uh, they are trying to rewrite history. Mm. Uh, and he, he did say, you know, like, um, if, if you go back uh, and check whether Israel uh, even like complied with the, the international law, mm. uh, it's not true. La. But he pointed out that that's not why they kind of uh, uh, took issue with it. Yeah. Um, it was more that, um, uh, what was the third one? Uh, shit, there were three reasons. I thought it's because it deals with the religious, religious text. text. Ah, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because yeah. it would endanger even uh, the Jewish minority in Singapore, like, right? Inflict yeah. tensions and all. Yeah. yeah, correct. And he said it is wrong to selectively point to the religious text to make a political point. Yeah. Even worse in this current situation, for the Israeli embassy to make use of the Quran for this purpose. Mm, mm, mm. And I mean, why it's interesting? Because when Shamugam came on, came on our podcast in December or yeah. November? Uh, December. December. We pointed out that there were already people flagging certain posts by the Israeli embassy in Singapore yeah. that were being seen as like, hey, can they actually do this? Yeah. Right? And I remember we both saw some posts where the captions were quite like, that's like scary captions. Mm. And his point there, which is consistent with what he said uh, here, is that they are embassies of sovereign countries and they have yeah. their own autonomy. And unless it really impacts the safety of Singaporeans or communities in Singapore, they won't step in. Mm, mm, so, I mean, interesting that, 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 you know, like now they are stepping in because that post, um, yeah, like, and, and, and like, I know we were talking about it yesterday, but the post also at first, in my mind, I had not seen the post. Yeah. But I was thinking, oh, how different can it be? And, and you, you, you were very clear about why it's different. Yeah, yeah. Because I think, I think interesting to note is how, um, is MHA and MFA stepping in. Yeah. MHA being Ministry of Home Affairs means they deal with terrorism, domestic uh, domestic issues, la, right? Yeah. Uh, MFA deals with foreign countries. La. But the, both of them had to step in in this case because, I think because, yeah, the, the post comes from, you know, Israel Embassy. Mm. But it's it's citing uh, or saying something about religious texts that is, that is part of one of the major religions here in Singapore, right? Mm. So that becomes a domestic issue. So, uh, yeah, Vivian and 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 uh, Shamugam working hand in hand again today. So like, like, Rideout was busy, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably a lot of messages being passed along Rideout Road, lah. No right, need messages, lah. Shamugam probably opened his window. Yo, I yo, think too Vivian. far away, lah. Too oh, far. It's too far. It's, far, it's, very, it's too far. very big property. Far, too far. <laughs> messenger, messenger. HDB so, neighbors different. 
you know, you can look into each other's house yeah, and all. Yeah, no, yeah, right yeah, out yeah. neighbors. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Very you're, different. You're, you're thinking if you're public housing mindset. Need messengers. Right, yeah. Need uh, messengers, correct. Yeah, maybe pigeons are pigeons. Are pigeons, pigeons, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, interesting that, yeah, they both had to come out and, and give very strong statements about it. Mm. Um, you, I, I guess, yeah, when, when the religious text is invoked or, or, or talked about in this way, it has the potential to, you know, make people really upset, right? Yeah. And I think Shamogam is right to point out that there is also a very uh, Jewish uh, minority living in Singapore. Yeah. And you don't want them to bear the brunt of, like, uh, anger, right, about these kind of things that, that the official embassy decides to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, between when you watch the interviews with, with Shamogam and, and Vivian, like, what, what was the feeling? What's the visceral reaction you're feeling to? To the anger or to or to the 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 not honest about not everything. Honest, uh. No, I mean I think um I was actually very heartened by Shamugam's stance on it. Yeah. And even his delivery. Mm. If mm. if you were not uh like uh, uh the most familiar with politics in Singapore and all that, and I think you look at that from a minister, it, it's very convincing la, mm. that they are taking mm. a hard stance. Yeah. In fact, I felt Vivian Balakrishnan was more diplomatic, but ultimately for him, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it is more about diplomacy, la, right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas for Shamuga, you you tell he's he's not taking any nonsense, like, and I'm very happy that they were very swift. And I actually felt like, wow, proud that this is the statement that our government is taking. La. Yeah, yeah. Because back in December itself, we already felt like the posts were kind of like borderline, la, right? Mm-hmm. Even now when you go and look at their Instagram, there's a lot of like, how you say, uh, uh like fury, la, understandably mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. But, it does feel like wow, this this is some scary stuff, lah. Yeah. yeah. Um. And and yeah. I, so I felt that watching Shamugam, lah. You? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, Shamugam literally said it's completely unacceptable and mm. wrong at many levels. Yeah. Whereas Vivian Balakrishnan said that's not on. That's not on. <laughs> that's not. On. So yeah, one is a bit more diplomatic about it, like you mentioned. The other one yeah. is like outright. It's like it's not acceptable, lah. Right. Yeah. And uh, like you, yeah, I did feel that this is. People ask, what can our leaders in Singapore be doing about the conflict and all? Mm. Um, and, you know, I know people are tired of hearing that it's very complex and all. But the truth is, Singapore doesn't have a huge say in, in everything, like, right? Mm. In, in this whole conflict and how it, it moves. And I think even Shamuga himself was very honest and very clear about that when he was here, right? Yeah. Talking about it that, honestly, like, what can Singapore really, really do to move the needle? Like, like yeah. not much. But if... Something happens on our shores that that um you know threatens to inflame tensions or just cause more anger like, right, in the community. Mm. I think having a very strong action like this sends a very good signal, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, of course, do want to bring it back to Taylor Swift again, but in light of like what people are hearing and and seeing about Singapore in the last month, I think this one is you know unpleasant situation. That okay, hopefully we can turn around and 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 you know really point out that Singapore is a place that, that observes rule and, and of the law and things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I mean, like, um, I, I think the the biggest difference from the post that we highlighted in December was, mm. yeah, it is more about their own perspective on things that it almost doesn't refer or incite stuff within Singapore's community. Mm, mm, you know, like, you know, he will pay, they will pay and stuff like that. Whereas this one, yeah, there is a large Muslim community in Singapore. Yeah. There are, there's a Jewish community in Singapore. So, yeah, like, sowing the seeds of tension. Like. Yeah. Um, and interesting enough, you know, Vivian Balakrishnan himself just came back from a trip to the Middle East yeah. where he met Netanyahu. Yeah. Uh, and even if you read the reports of that, I mean, quite, quite uh, good that uh, he made it very clear that as as a country, we do feel that Israel's actions have gone too far. Yeah, gone too far. That's gone the too far. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know. I mean, whenever there's these diplomatic meetings, all they show is a picture of two people staring at each other. Yeah. we don't know how it was said. Yeah, but it feels consistent with the stance that Singapore has always taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is a lot of talk. Even we have we are Shamugam uh, ourselves about Singapore's history with Israel, but so far, I think I'm quite like. Um, heartened by our stance like, okay, mm. we have this relationship we can't run away from it yeah. but where we can call out we call out like. yeah. don't know what happens outside of public eye but at least in the public eye I think this is being managed quite well like. yeah. and um, a, a little nugget also yeah. that same trip uh, Vivian has uh, he brought along WP MP yeah. Gerald Giam yeah. 
And uh, I think he someone asked him about it during the same doorstop oh. interview. And he said that, he yes, he invited Gerald Giam to show that Singaporeans are united in face of uh, global issues like this. Oh. Uh, even so, to show that even an opposition MP can come along and show and be part of the Singapore oh. message. La, which I thought was like, wow, that's uh, pretty, you know, in in light of everything going on everywhere else in politics, la, right? Yeah. It's quite a power move, la, right? Uh, yeah. And... and, and it's a, it's a, it's what a leader does, lah, right? You know, in terms of like, okay, you can have your squabbles internally and all that, but when you go out to the world, you got to show, show like, uh, unite, unity, and one force, lah, right? Mm, but hopefully, yeah. like, it's true, lah. I'm like, like lunch, you know, right? Yeah. Gerald Gam sitting by himself. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, <laughs> people were, some people online were were likening it to the BMT boy at the canteen. You know, there's one. There's an image from years ago of one BMT recruit eating with his parents in the canteen on the uh, first day of BMT. Uh, uh. And his face is like, oh, damn this, yeah. <laughs> And then there's a picture of Gerald Gam also sitting at the table with Vivian <laughs> and others. And also, I mean, not that yet, but he, yeah. he has, he's actually even looking the same angle and direction and all. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine if like they got like inside jokes and stuff yeah. like that? I mean, like I think I, I didn't know how common it was. That means mm. it sounds like it's not the most common lah. Right, that, when there's an opposition uh, member joining a Singapore yeah. delegation. Actually, what I've been understanding is that they they do, you know, they do like uh, at least have one M- uh, opposition MP go for international study trips or whatever mm. together on. Uh. Mm. So, so it's, and but the person is like a minority like, in some sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe, yeah, like, like you said, very lonely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like they make a joke and like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you had to be there. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, you might not get it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is. It does paint a nice picture, mm. um, uh, Another thing is that they apparently uh, the Israeli embassy has released a statement, or at least a spokesperson has replied la, that yeah. uh, the post had gone up without the necessary approvals, mm-hmm. and that the person responsible has already been harshly punished and will face internal disciplinary measures. Mm. Uh, I mean, there's no way of verifying how yeah. true that is. True. Uh, but it just feels like hmm, I hope they take this to heart uh, because if you look at the posts that even December when we when we pointed it out and other people online are po- pointing out it feels like similar kind of narratives mm, mm. so that's where it feels like mm, okay uh, this because the, they also said due to security reasons they were unable to divulge the name or role of the person la. I mean you know when when I when I hear that it's the Israeli Israeli embassy saying that someone will be harshly punished. Yeah, I didn't... I was also like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, okay, let's just make sure that it's like, you know, stuff that, that you know, like, it, 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 it's all kosher stuff, lah, right, so to speak. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Right? The yeah, Israeli yeah. harsh punishment. Yeah. Probably different from regular harsh punishment. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, I mean... Uh, let, let, I mean, if it's something about losing a job, okay, like, you know, yeah, yeah. but nothing more than that. Like, yeah. And it's good that they came out and they were very forthcoming with admitting that it's not the best post mm. and that they respect religion and racial harmony in Singapore. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like, in, in this case, I mean, even when I look online, because this has appeared on uh, articles and news outlets around the world, but also on Reddit, subreddits from around the world. Yeah. But generally... There isn't anyone saying that, oh, this is wrong, yeah. that the the minister or ministry clamped down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in fact, yeah. In fact, all the coverage, I think, is, is like, let's say I'm looking at, like, Time magazine, right? Mm. The title is Singapore orders Israeli embassy to delete inappropriate social posts about Palestine, right? Yeah. So generally quite neutral. They're not, yeah. It doesn't say, like, doesn't have that feel, like, typical, like, Singapore controls messaging and all that. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, that's why it's 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 curious like how Israel embassies around the world operate. Like. Mm, mm. Because Singapore, I mean, you know, Singapore is known for not having free speech and all. But mm. I mean, this is an example of how true free speech uh, is also not the best, like, you know. Yeah. Uh, because you can imagine in a country like say the US or the UK, I can't imagine the government telling an embassy or something to take a post down. Mm, mm, mm. Right. I think Singapore is set up that way, which is good and bad. But mm. in this case, I think it is it is a good thing. Mm. Um, but it was funny that on the Reddit Singapore, mm. the post that like kind of like had these articles all had their comment sections locked. You know? Locked. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Which Why? was a bit, I don't know. Mm. So some people in the other more, like how you say, uh, uh, non kosher kind of uh, Reddit threads. Yeah. They all pointed out that, oh, are the moderators of uh, Reddit Singapore kind of like, I don't know, 
trying to to stop this from like uh, descending into a sh- cesspool of shit la. possibly possibly yeah but I mean like locking comments don't know it just feels very unreddit uh, actually, I mean, I don't know how much you use Reddit, lah. Mm. Right, I, I'm still not a super power user or that. Mm. But my understanding is that moderates, moderate, moderators are generally trusted to moderate the community a lot more than than any other social media platform, lah. Mm. So even if there's a whiff of like people starting to sound like incels or say something oh, they... nasty, you lock it. It's it's completely within your your acceptable realms for you to do it. Oh. People can complain, but, you know, unless you're the moderator, you can't really, there's not much you can do. Lah. And it's, it's a lot of times what the moderator needs to do is to explain why they're locking certain posts. Mm. I'm not sure if that came up in the, the, the subreddit there, but no. sometimes it's just to prevent stuff devolving into like, you know, in cell discussions and stuff like that or, or really inappropriate doxing. And, oh, like, it's, it's not like YouTube la, when when a celebrity locks their comment, you know, hey, yeah. you fucked up. La, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or even if like sometimes like you complain about a comment or something that is harassing and all that and it's obviously like like a personal attack on it, the algorithm doesn't do shit, la, right? YouTube doesn't do shit. They, mm. they rather focus on keeping, you know, the platform like free of any kind of self-censorship than on like, you know, uh, potential harm it could cause people. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, debatable the how powerful it is, but if anything, I would say is that the social media doesn't do enough, la, right, to, to limit yeah. this kind of speech. La. Uh, but my, one thing you say also is that, uh, like that echoes what Vivian Balakrishnan says, that in Singapore, we do things differently. La, oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said that the way we deal with multiracial issues is a net positive, la, right? If anything, compared to a lot of other places. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that statement? Uh? Uh, I mean, agree that we do things differently. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, if you look at other countries around the world, I also agree that net, there's a positive. La. Mm-hmm. You can disagree with the, 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 the most specifics, but overall, I think our racial harmony is, is very uncommon. La. Yeah. Uh, it's very uncommon because even over the weekend, like I, I went for a long walk with my wife, and like we stopped by at the Laguna Laguna Food Village at East Coast Park. Yeah, and like you sit there, which I mean can be the set the same of any hawker center, like, mm. But you just look; it's like all nationalities, races, uh, like uh, shapes, sizes, social economic tiers to a certain extent. Also, mm. and you look at it, you're like, wow, shit. Uh, everything you read in the news about how it's going in other countries, this really is an anomaly, like. Yeah. Yeah. And then I stood up and said the pledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you hardcore you felt hardcore Singaporean. Hardcore right? Singaporean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like when you heard that statement from Vivian B. We do it differently, like, I think he's uh, right. Uh can't outright say we do it better. Yeah. But the fact, yeah, like, I mean like you like we can I can walk into a temple or, you know, a Hindu temple even. I can walk into a church and then I can walk to a lot of like even places of worship and all that and never feel uh, completely out of place or unwelcome or anything like that, and mm. I think that's even more telling to me like, than the whole than than racial differences and all that, like, right? Mm. Because like religious differences, I think that that's where people can can get really upset about things. Yeah, but the fact that we're all open to different types of people and, and all it just says a lot more, like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I of course I have my own thoughts about religion and, and its role in society and everything, but the point is that you know as as things are now. Uh, there's very few places in the world that can where you can do what, what we do in Singapore, la, right? Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you you don't you feel you don't feel like your life is under threat, la, mm-hmm. Right, yeah. even if the, they are not welcoming for whatever reason, yeah, you never feel like your life is under threat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is like really like oh shit, uh, yeah, la, there's there's some some good, la. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I mean, this is a positive. Yeah, positive. Yeah. Positive, yeah. yeah. Uh, discussion. You know, some Singapore pride there. Yeah, 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 man. And so, yeah, kudos to uh, Shamugam mm. and Vivian Balakrishnan mm. flying the Singapore flag proud in this uh, quite difficult uh, issue and circumstance. A lot, of, a lot. Of, I think there's a UN resolution or ceasefire that, yeah, yeah. that Israel is uh, uh, rejecting and, and the US cancelling a yeah cancelling a, a mission to the US or something like that yeah, yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of like unpleasant diplomatic things going on between uh, Israel and the, the rest of the world, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, so Tough Singapore. One. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's you know externally Singapore is putting up this very uh good front. Yeah. Not saying that internally everything is nice and dandy, like, right? Yeah. Uh, we got another big 
big uh a big what do you call it uh, uh hoo ha about um a, a very familiar a very familiar face now to everyone yeah uh, that just also happened over the weekend but but this one I think is is it's less debatable, but it's just interesting, right? Yeah. yeah. And what is this? Uh? But it's funny, right? Like, on one hand, you know, like, uh, amongst the more senior ministers or ex-ministers of PAP, yeah. you know, like, you get Vivian Balakrishnan, Shamugam, and, like, just in terms of, like, you know, the in- Indian ministers and all, mm-hmm. there's, like, uh, the third person <laughs> we're going to be talking about, right? <laughs> but how far, how far things have fallen? Yeah. Uh, because uh, it was uh, also yesterday, 25th mm-hmm. March, when um, ex-minister S. Iswaran, mm. former Singapore Transport Minister, uh, appeared in the state court and uh, has been slapped with eight new charges mm. Mm. Uh, in addition to the 27 that he got last year, yeah. which brings it to 35. Yep. Uh, hey, he got charged last year or earlier this year? Uh, earlier this year. Earlier this yeah, year, yeah. January. So a total of 35. Mm. Uh, the eight new charges are all kind of similar to uh, the ones to uh, some that he got previously, which is under the section 165 of the penal code, mm-hmm. which makes it an offense for public servants to obtain valuable items from someone involved with them in an official capacity. Mm. And that is the, the penal code where it doesn't matter the motivation, right? Mm. Just accepting it is an offense. Yeah. Um, whereas as, as for the previous 27, 24 were under the same one was under obstruction of justice and one was un- uh, two, two under the PCA, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Prevention of Corruptions Act. Yeah. So in this case, yeah, like it's still a development, developing case. Mm. Feels like it was somewhat unexpected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there were no new interviews of Isoran by CPIB. Mm. These were all based off interviews that he did last year. Mm. Uh, and even when he got charged earlier this year for the 27 charges, there were eight that were not taken up. Yeah. So yeah, now, there were, there not, were nine. Yeah, yeah. They, they were, were nine. Not, they did not proceed with the charge. They did not proceed. Yeah. But then suddenly, you got this eight. La. Yeah. And a completely different uh, person giving it to him, la, right? Yeah. No longer Ong Bing Singh. Similar kind of items. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's why it's worth, worth looking at. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's the summary of the legalities. La. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but what about the items? <laughs> I mean, but before going to items, I think yeah. when I came across this thing, the first thing, it popped out on YouTube, la, right? Uh, as far as going to court. And uh, I don't know the whole thing of him how he uh, how he attended court was something to behold la, I would uh, say why I don't know if you watched it yeah, I watched, full, it, right? watched it the apparently uh, if you watch the vehicle arrives and then his team of lawyers all get out uh. then they sort of stand in one line you know like <laughs> Avengers waiting for Captain America to come forward yeah. then his run comes out the other side of the vehicle then he joins them like in one row then they start walking <laughs> down the state courts together and uh, I think. Um, Israel was like it generally he looked like quite uh, friendly like, right? yeah, good yeah. morning thank you all for coming down is it sorry for oh, sorry. making you all get up so sorry early making you all get up too early yeah, yeah. similar to, to how Pritam was like yeah. uh, why do you think I come to state courts kind of feel yeah. right? but uh, yeah then um, yeah they just walked down like uh, like you know the backstreet boys you know uh. walking down like a music video kind of thing yeah. so and, and he wasn't flanked by the the, 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 Vinder. Singh, the big the big man himself uh, but yeah he was flanked by all these lawyers then another funny thing happened like another reporter also tripped on the steps of the high uh, of the state courts yeah uh, similar to how it happened when Pritam was walking or so yeah and uh, but this one the Israel one up Pritam la. the <laughs> reporter dropped his phone and wow Israel even picked up the phone for him you know wow. and he told him take care you yeah, know take, take care, care. <laughs> so I'm like very nice demeanor la. Yeah, very yeah. nice demeanor it seems like uh Two things like one, the whoever's in charge of safety and all that in state courts needs to look at those steps, like, right? Like everyone seems to be tripping over it. Like, I think it's a URA thing, maybe it's a URA thing. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is also like um it's, it seems like helping falling reporters is like the new kissing babies for politicians. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like to make yourself look better, you help a fallen reporter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fallen reporter, yeah, correct, yeah, correct. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it just felt uncanny, like because mm-hmm. uh so I mean, I would like it doesn't feel like it was staged. Even though some yeah. people are, you know, speculating. Yeah. Uh but yeah, a very different kind of vibe from when Pritam appeared. You know, he came out of a car himself. Yeah. Yeah. And you were saying, you know, he looked a bit like tired yeah. or worn out. Sure. And he came. Whereas this one is like, yeah, they're all in sync and then uh yeah, everyone else is in black, Iswaran is in blue. Mm, mm. So so yeah, like, and then when it comes to the items, uh the items he got was uh, like a golf driver. Yep. 
uh, two bottles of uh, whiskey, mm-hmm. uh, a set of golf clubs, yeah. a Brompton T-line bicycle, yeah. two bottles of M&H uh, whiskey, mm. and uh, another golf uh, item uh, and two golf chippers, which mm. total up to about uh, uh, $19,000. Uh. Yep, yep. Uh, and specifically, it's no longer Ong Beng Singh, who is the other half. It mm. is... Mr. Lam Kok Singh, the managing director of Lam Chang Holdings, which mm. is a con, uh, construction company. Yeah. Uh, so, like, like from this also, it was uh, announced that Ong Beng Singh mm. has not been charged. Yeah. yeah. Right. So not it is, yet, la, right? Not yet. I, oh, not yet. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Cause still pending. I think the same for this Lam, Lam Kok Singh also. They said that they will conclude uh, Israel's oh. case before moving on with anything from the Lam, Lam Kok Singh. Uh. Oh, yeah, so yeah. so amazing! Just hasn't as in the verdict is not out, uh? No, as in they have not moved forward the charge. Uh. But the fact that he was pulled in for questioning, uh, maybe he's they might be negotiating something or what you know based on how much information he's providing and everything. Also, uh, so it is after the case. Oh, I thought he was acquitted. Really? Oh no, 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 no. no, 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 no. Like, he's still, is, he's yeah. still uh, he might might uh, do that. So mm. the the interesting thing about this this case is that um. The person who allegedly gave these things, Mr. Mm. Lam, mm. he is MD of Lam Chang Holdings. Mm. And Lam Chang Holdings uh, received a contract um, to, uh, that was awarded to them in 2016 yeah. uh, of 325 million uh, for addition and alteration works to Tanamira MRT and the existing viaducts. Mm. Mm. So a bunch of uh, uh, new things that um, are only going to be completed in 2026, yep. 2026. Yeah. So because of that association, there's a bit more, you know, with Ong Bing Singh, it was F1. Yeah. So this one, if you like, I think people are alluding, oh, is, does this have to do with the contract? And some people are saying the contract was awarded before these things happened. Yeah. Correct. Right. Because these things happened all between 21 and 22. La. Before Israel even became Minister of Transport. Before, actually. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So it's a huge contract. It's like 300 over million and everything. Yeah. But, yeah, it's all happened. The awarding and all that came happened before it's Warren. Yeah. Pretty and cool. I mean, LCBC, which is the Lam Chang Building Contractors, which is mm. a subsidiary of Lam Chang Holdings, has another ongoing project, mm. uh, which is the construction of the North-South Corridor Tunnel between Ang Mo Kyo, yeah. uh, Avenue 3 and 9. And that is worth $799 million. Whew, Okay. And when you go to their website, they have a fuck ton of projects. So I yeah. think, yeah, they're, they're doing pretty well. It's a public company, uh, this Lam Chang Holdings. That's yeah. huge, Public man. company, yeah. Holy shit. So it's not like some fly-by-night small contractor. Yeah. Or it's big company. Uh. Yeah. So I I think even they they said that they will, you know, they only provide a statement after more information comes yeah. back and all that, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the funny thing is, you know, as big as they are, you know, they are building all this stuff. Seems like the only profile photo that Straits Times would get of Mr. Lum is some grainy ash pixelated yeah. shit. Like. Only from the website. Like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's one of those companies that you might not never heard of, but they are super big. Like. Keep low profile. Yeah, keep low profile. Like, right? yeah. I mean, government contracts that for these kind of upgrading it's works. Huge. Huge, like. right? You know, huge. hundreds of millions. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I mean, with all this unfolding, right? Mm-hmm. Like, any, any, any thoughts, Terrence? Um... I mean, there's is this still very early, lah, right? And and I think people ag- again online have been asking that same question, like nineteen thousand dollars in total for all the, for these things. It's peanuts, uh, It's like he yeah. earns he earns that easily in a month, uh, right? Mm. Why would anyone risk throwing away their career for you know something that honestly is not worth that much, lah? Mm. Um, but again, yeah, I think like you mentioned, we allude to the fact that it's not about the amount or what. The, the other party gets in exchange but it's the fact that his job as it is his job description and his job scope and everything does not allow him to receive these gifts from people that are interested parties in transactions with the Singapore government right? yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's the crux of the issue right mm. that, that I mean even if you say that he can easily afford this himself the point is he he knows that he shouldn't he should know that he's not supposed to do it yeah, yeah exactly and especially when you are in such a role as a minister, you need to be extra cautious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Extra cautious, which is why it feels like, could this be like a, I mean, just, it, it could it, is it just Iswaran who's been mm. doing this? Mm. Or is this kind of like a message that's being sent out or a sign of things to come? Mm, mm, because, I don't know, it feels weird that it's just one person who 
tripped up. Mm. Uh, it's like, you know, whenever you see these scandals hit, sometimes it's the first thing that breaks the news, but then after that, it uncovers a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that other people are guilty, but... I mean, it was it's surprising that more charges came. And same thing, like, he said, I'm not guilty. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. guilty at all. But I, I would say that these charges to me, um, as much as you know, they are similar similar kinds, similar charges based on uh, Section 165, like, right, yeah. which is public servant cannot receive gifts. Yeah. Uh, these, to me, uh, re- really speak to, they, they sound much more like gifts uh, than even the F1 the F1 Why, yeah? ones I have felt. Um, because, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, which some people online are were saying about F1 stuff, is that if you are the person who brought in F1, or you are the person instrumental to, you know, making sure that your uh. contract came up again, it's kind of, uh, you kind of need to understand what the product is, right? You kind of need to attend F1. You need to understand, oh, this is why F1 is awesome. Mm. This is why businesses want to pay mm-hmm. for it and this is why we need to oh this is why a business would want to come and buy a green room and then you know entertain guests if you never experienced it yourself can you be the best person to negotiate a place for it? it's like it's like for us like right when we tell people the best way to you know uh understand what folklore means is to actually record one yourself like right mm. we talked about that a lot right mm. uh, not that we pay people to do that i think it's more that you really had experienced it to yeah, understand what the yeah. product is so in some ways, you could argue that some of the things related to the F1 are parts of being the, the person in charge. Right? You have to experience it. And um, monetarily, does it lead to a lot more gains for you? Mm. You know, like... Or Singapore, I, Singapore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, like, like you know, remember my, uh, on my on my wedding night, uh, I had like a hotel room for my, me and my wife, obviously. Yeah. I also had a hotel room for all the brothers like, in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were one of the brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you were the only one that took up the office. Yeah. In the hotel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how happening that hotel room was that night. Like, right? I but, mean, yeah. I wish I was there with someone. <laughs> but at that time, I was like single as fuck. Yeah, yeah. So I just went to sleep. <laughs> so my point here is, even if I give you a hotel room, does it mean that there's a party going on in the hotel room? No. La. You in fact, it made me sad. There is... <laughs> It made me sad because sitting there, I was like, this beautiful room. I went to eat breakfast alone. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, man. Here is like this guy getting married to the love of his life and I'm yeah. just alone. Yeah, beautiful hotel room alone. Beautiful. <laughs> so my point here is like, yeah, you prov- I can provide you a green room at F1. Does it mean that, you know, you have the most awesome time in your life or what? No, not yeah. necessarily, like, right? But then what about the other gifts? You also got musical uh, tickets and football. That's nothing to do with F1. Correct. Yeah. But also... I would argue, like if I was in the position, uh, that part of the F1 experience is understanding how international standards of entertainment are. Mm. You know, understanding what it means to go to a place like London and experience Broadway, uh, even the nosebleed seats. There's something, there's an experience about it. Uh, I, I've, I've watched nosebleed. I, I bought the nosebleed tickets, which are mm. the, the cheapest tickets that you line up at like 8 a.m. in the morning to get to watch like Phantom of the Opera. And it's really at the top of the thing and the view is like shit. But the whole thing is just an experience, like, right? Mm. And it's all part of like a global city, the entertainment options and all that, right? Yeah. You could argue that there's an element of like, hey, you know, uh, let's go and watch these musicals and understand what it means to entertain people and to bring them on an experience. So F1 is not just about you have the race, you have a green room and that's it. It's mm. got to have all the things around it. You know, back then there was an F1 Rocks concert. Now there's the every there's always a concert every year, like, right? Mm. There's a lot of fringe activities and events going on. Uh and, and yeah, like, it, it just it's just part of the I could even argue that it's part of the research, like, right? Yeah. Of understanding what it means to have like, oh, you know, uh theater performances, sporting events and what next to an F1 happening. Like. Mm. And uh yeah, I could you could conceivably say that that was Iswaran maybe doing research or something like right mm. sitting in research so right. so a little surprise to you I think the same might apply in this case as well for the lawyers <laughs> you know why why yeah? because the lawyers the lawyers I mean what the, the argument, argument you're saying okay. right you know yeah. he had to experience what entertainment is to think about F1 holistically correct, correct. right yeah, yeah. so you know LCBC, which mm. is Lam Ching uh, Building Contractors, mm. uh, they have a uh, project with LTE about a construction of a north-south corridor tunnel, right? Mm. Turns out, an eagle-eyed redditor pointed out that in 2023, 
there was a video that S. G. Isuron posted on his Facebook page with the hashtag Come Ride With Us, mm. where he was exploring the cycling paths in the west of Singapore <laughs> and how you can head to One North via the rail corridor. Mm. Another corridor. Mm. Correct. You know, and in that video, he was on a bicycle. Ah. And guess what the bicycle is? It was a Brompton. It was the Brompton. The Brompton. <laughs> wow. The Amazing. Brompton. And apparently, the editor also pointed out that that is a Brompton T line. Ah. And this was 2023, Terence. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so if they have this contract that mm. is still being built, Israel was doing, maybe he's a man of research. Yeah. He needs to taste. Yeah. <laughs> he needs to taste what he's going to serve. He's like, you know, like when we say sometimes, how can the chef not taste his food first, then exactly. serve it? That's what Israel is doing. And what is Tanamera famous for having around the station? <gasps> golf courses. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, golf clubs. That makes sense. Right. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. just a man of research. Yeah, 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 he needs yeah. to really feel the ground. Yeah. You know, yeah. so maybe that's his thing. Uh. Possible, possible. That's his thing. You know, the interesting thing is, um, Obviously, here, yeah. the Brompton bicycle is the most expensive thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you look up the, the Brompton bicycle a little bit? Uh, no, I know I know of Brompton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, Bromptons have been, traditionally in Singapore, it was, last time, uh, there was some, there was an issue, it was a case, all right, of, of procurement of Bromptons for a government agency. That got, it? Yeah, yeah, they got the supplier in trouble. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, back then, they, I think they, I can't remember if it was NEA or something like that, mm. but someone procured Brompton bicycles and ended up getting in trouble, right? Oh. So Brompton and 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 uh, corruption in Singapore uh, <laughs> kind of uh, have a lot of links, right? Uh, this one's the next chapter in it. Oh, uh, next chapter. And the interesting, the next chapter is that it involves Brompton T line tr- uh, bicycles, and the T stands for titanium, uh, which is like apparently this was. This bicycle was released like early 2022, uh-huh. and um, true to its price, it was a 4,180 pound uh-huh. uh, bicycle that was very coveted because it's made of titanium, yeah. super light. Uh, you watch the video, super easy to fold. Um, you know, there are all these men in spandex all like swarming over it, and, like wow, it's so awesome and all that uh-huh. So I, I, my understanding is that it's very, very coveted. And like it was not available in a lot of quantities except in official Brompton stores, one of which was Singapore. Yeah. I mean, even Singapore is a showroom. I don't think you can... Brom- Brompton Junction. Yeah, uh, Brompton, Brompton Junction, Junction right? is what it's uh, called. Yeah. yeah. At Funan, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a very coveted bicycle. Uh, you watch even the the pedal, right? The pedal is like a quick release system. You know, usually folding bicycle, the pedal, you just fold and then it still sticks out a bit. Mm. So it's like, you just press one button, pull it out, and quick release thing, click it somewhere so that it's really streamlined. Oh. Then you can really pull it into the MRT and, and that's what is Warren needed to find out like, how <laughs> easy it is to do. How easy it is, you know, like, <laughs> to go from North South Rail, to take the train, you know, come out, yeah, yeah, go yeah. to your golf course. Yeah. Ah. You know, maybe what we're doing here is we're already writing the lawyer's defense <laughs> for all this really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's that. Uh, and yeah, the golf golf clubs, are, right? Yeah. Uh, Even I mean, though golf courses now in Singapore by 2020 yeah. something, they're all going to be phased out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, back right. then, who knows? Yeah, yeah. You know? So, so yeah, the, the golf clubs are all also uh, very high-end ones, yeah. right? Like the Honma one was like, Apparently, Honma was, uh, for decades, the Honma story has been set in the foothills of Sakata, Japan. Mm. So, Japanese, like, uh, made in Japan one, uh, I think, these Honma clubs. I don't know anything about golf clubs, uh, so I might sound like an idiot, but apparently very good. Uh, the Scotty Cameron Phantom. Alignment by design, you know? like And then, like, a lot of carbon fiber and, like, uh, inspiration at every angle. So, it, so it says. Uh, mm. um, but, yeah, you know, that's the golf clubs, uh, again, which... I the the one thing the yeah la, that's where I start to find out okay very tenuous link between mm. like saying that you're doing research and yeah, like, yeah. what what your portfolio is like right yeah it's tenuous like in case anyone's listening to keep <laughs> these two deluded idiots this like, is comedy it's, folks it's comedy yeah, yeah. it's comedy okay yeah. we're just trying our best to grasp at the straws yeah but the alcohol the uh, alcohol how do you how do you justify the alcohol you can't I mean. Right? You know how some people say their creativity is unlocked when ah, they have alcohol? Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe it's like, I can't think straight. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. like, I need to have whiskey with me. Yeah. Yeah. For me to experience and do my research, I need to have, I need to be open up because, you know, being a minister is very stressful. Yeah. I just yeah. need to, to unleash. That's when I do my best thinking. Correct, correct, yeah. yeah. But but the, the thing is that the alcohol here is not like the, um, like, you know, the gangbusters expensive. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. we're talking about a couple hundred dollars a bottle kind of, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, as an example, I think the wine, the most expensive wine was the, oh, even this name, the Albert Bichot Domaine de Clos Frantin. 
you know, apparently from an estate, a beautiful 18th century estate in the Nuit Saint-Georges at the heart of Côte de Nuit uh, in France, uh, right? Mm. So very, very high-end stuff that we're talking about. Like, uh, not, not very, uh, so I'm saying like 300 bucks a bottle maybe. Yeah. Um, the Gordon and MacPhail Cow Ilia Whiskey, mm. also about $270 a bottle. Yeah. Um. But wow, this is Ron is a man of like uh pretty pretty good taste, lah, right? You, you gotta say. In in the sense what like he doesn't only just go for like the super expensive ones. Because you get bottles of yeah. wine that can go up to like fifteen, thirty thousand dollars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah, and, and a lot of times those bottles are you know, usually people only have one bottle yeah. or something. This one is like wow, he's got a lot of bottles, multiple bottles of these like hundred, two hundred dollar plus wine nut, right? Yeah. Uh you know, you look at the timeline, November twenty twenty one, four bottles of whiskey. And then the uh, then they, in January they have to top up now two bottles already. <laughs> so <laughs> wow, over December twenty twenty one there was a lot of drinking going oh, on. Huh? Four more. bottles of whiskey wiped out. Uh yeah, and then uh in, in May again another two bottles of the same whiskey. Come mm. on. So you know he likes this Gordon and McPhail whiskey. Oh yeah, about. January there was two, then May another two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct. Oh, so wow. Yeah. That's, that's that's his thing, huh? Gordon and McPhail. Yeah, Gordon McPhail. I mean, I are you a whiskey person? No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not either. So I, I would wish someone in our Reddit or something knows about these whiskeys and what's so special about them. Like, yeah, right? correct, correct, correct. That is one loves them so much. Huh? Um but yeah, it's I mean, it's a lot of uh the a lot of interesting details that come out about the the things that Iswaran likes. You know, we know that he loves musicals. Mm. We know he loves golf. Now football, we know he loves uh, football. Yeah, football, biking, wine, whiskey, all the all the high end stuff. Like Feels like stuff. we're getting to know him. Uh. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> This is how you get to know someone, right? This is like a dating profile almost. <laughs> exactly. Right? It's like the it's like the mystery of Iswaran. Then I saw something someone pointed out. Maybe his love language is gifting. La. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True. Some people got quality time, some people got words of affirmation. Iswaran is gifting. La. That's how he deals with love. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. fucking it's hilarious, man. Yeah. And, and but but you're right, you know, you're you're actually right about the Brompton bicycle that it could be you could even argue that it's part of research because, you know, MRT has like these limitations on how big your yeah. luggage you can bring in. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I need to get the, the like, the what what's a foldable that I can fit into the MRT. I need you also do the, research for the, what, the uh, corridor. Yeah, he's like, you think I want to, you think I want to bring this home? <laughs> uh? You think I want to bring this 4,000 pound bicycle home? Uh? I mean, because also when he goes on the bicycle trip, uh, I mean, he's wearing a polo t-shirt and uh, uh, pants, uh, so not mm. the most bicycle. And next to him is Bayam King, who is full spandex. Oh, it is? Yeah, <laughs> full spandex. <laughs> I'm not so, surprised. So you can already tell, like, okay, one of them cycles a lot one of them doesn't la. yeah uh, so, so yeah, it's just interesting wow. yeah. funny is yeah BM King does strike me as a spandex bro yeah it's total spandex bro yeah um, but but yeah I mean now the case uh, I mean the the penalties for what he's being charged are quite severe mm. uh, I mean and also you can't help just notice how like with Pritam last week, Isura this week, it mm. almost feels like scandals now in Singapore, right? We'll always come in twos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If yeah, you see yeah. something break, yeah. chances are that it's going to be... I Right out didn't have, right out didn't have. Got, like, got twos, but from the same oh, party. Twos. Correct, correct. <laughs> <laughs> correct. Yeah. Got twos. Maybe it's after it's the street. fucking populace and right out, they're like, you know what? Um, Fuck, man. We need to think of a new plan. Yeah. Like, it has to be pair, pair everything. Everything in pairs, yeah. okay? The, or, the yin and yang. Yeah, yeah. Yin and yang. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be an interesting next few months. La. Yeah, it is. Interesting next few months. Uh, but of, uh, I mean, I guess like the question to ask is, of all these items that that uh, Iswaran seemed to have obtained from Lam, Lam Kok Singh and all that, mm. right? like if you were, if you were a, a public servant and, and you, know, you would risk your career for, one, for these items, which, which item would you risk it for? Um... I think if assuming that I'm a I'm a fan of like uh, alcohol and all, mm. probably like uh, the alcohol like, because that's the one thing where you can drink and then like there's no more trace like. Yeah, everything else yeah. is very tangible, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like twenty years down the road, this bike people will just say, "Hey, this is the one you got from Lam Cheng, right?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas the whiskey you just down it. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you? I also think so. Yeah, to me, I wouldn't go for the bikes or the golf clubs. Yeah. Too easy to too easy for someone to spot you using it and then like, "Hey, where did that come from?" 
Yeah. Whereas, I mean, alcohol, whiskey is whiskey, you know, right. you, 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 maybe unmarked bottle or something, <laughs> you keep at home. <laughs> Put Coca Cola the... bottle or something. <laughs> Peel out, replace, <laughs> replace the package. Uh, and they can't call you out. Right? They can't, right? Yeah. Unless you like, get some connoisseur on board to, to, to do a taste test. But you don't know. You wouldn't know. Because now, Bicycle, already people pointed out his 2023 video, Come Ride With Us. It's yeah. a Brompton. Yeah, Brompton. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-mm. Then then Brompton like what what how should Brompton react to this like is it like positive or negative press or what do you, what do you think? I, think the best thing is- I, I mean I never knew about this titanium yeah. line ever. Not that I could afford it, but like oh wow, I'm like okay, it's a thing, right? I mean I don't know because I know Brompton. Brompton is a brand that like I rem- I won't deny I get annoyed by it, oh, okay. Especially how people get over oh, the Brompton Bros. I have one friend who yeah. set up an Instagram profile for him and his Brompton Bro friends. Oh, then I'm like oh my god. <laughs> It's like the the new midlife crisis. You're not gonna dox it, like, by naming. Oh, I won't dox it. I won't dox it. Uh, yeah, it is like it is. Yeah, I think we've alluded to it. Like yeah. when I went for that the non uh, or the uh, what a car free day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were a lot of uh, I don't even say bros. I say uncles. Uh, Brompton uncles. uncles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. like there are very few things where I would be that willing to pay a premium just based on the assurance of quality. I think like yeah, yeah. Uh, and I like phone and laptop. I think that one. Okay, I sold my soul to Apple. Correct. I know you pay, you get, but. Anything other like a tire and all, like sometimes I see some brands that charge like hundred and fifty bucks for a pair of shorts. Yeah, then I'm like, you know what? I'm totally fine paying like a f- fraction of that for like a twenty dollar pair of shorts because I don't think the quality is that different. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even earphones, uh, personal earphones and all. Yeah, like I always feel you have the market leader that charges a shit ton. But a lot of the money you're paying there is just for the brand. La. And Brompton to me is like a brand like that. La. But have you actually used the Brompton? Yeah, I used my, that one friend who oh, started on Instagram. Okay. I went to his house and he was like, hey bro, you got to try my Brompton. Then, I tried it. I'm like, girl, it's a bike. La. <laughs> then he was come, he was showing me like, wow, how to do it. And like, <laughs> this is a bicycle. This is a wheel. And this is a pedal you turn. <laughs> so how to collapse it. <laughs> okay. and all. But he was very aware that he is buying into the whole Brompton kind of thing. Like, and he didn't yeah, yeah. shy away from it, which is what I appreciate. Yeah, yeah. If people who don't acknowledge that, yo, part of this Brompton is just the branding. Yeah. Uh, and okay, you get a certain level of quality, but is it really worth that much? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I tried it. Like. You, you have affordable bike, I have right? affordable, yeah. So, so contrary, and it's not a Brompton. Like. Yeah, yeah. Contrary to, to what people might think, I'm actually very big on cycling. and uh, I like cycling. And I have a Dahon foldable bike. Uh, and Dahon is, is, is already not, say, the cheapest already, right? But, I felt like, okay, it's quite good. Uh, it's a brand and, you know, it's got history and the foldable bikes are nicely designed and all. Mm. I enjoy it a lot. But yeah, it's definitely not as convenient as Brompton from just watching how people like, the, the wheels just like sort of flip up when mm. you pull up a Brompton. Uh. Mm. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite a, a feat of engineering, I suppose, mm. to be able to do that. Whereas Dahon is really like, you just fold it and then it's uh. very thick after that. And if you ask me to push that to MRT, I'm like, nah, fuck it. Like, you know, uh. I'm not, not going to bother. But um, yeah, you know, I I do when I see Brompton Bros. I also like, how can you pay like that much more for a foldable bike, la, Right? Mm. No matter how much lighter it is on that, because I sit on my Dahon, you sit on your thing. We both look like overweight uncles on a tiny little bicycle, la, Right? With your feet moving <laughs> yeah, very fast, feet very fast. The wheel so small. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a fucking like a chihuahua walking at it, uh. So I'm like. It's not that much difference unless yeah. I mean even if you're like a serious biker, you wouldn't be riding a Brompton and all. Like, a serious like a uh, race race uh, biker, yeah. you wouldn't be riding a Brompton, like, right? Yeah. So that that to me is like Brompton is just like mostly a flex, like, yeah. It's a flex, uh. It is a flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of people like the flex. Yeah. So so yeah, I think cow the cow Ila whiskey is what we would go for, like, right? Yeah, yeah correct, yeah, correct. I, I mean, he has the three bottles of wine worth a thousand one. So like per bottle, that is probably the oh no, there's a. Bo- there's a that's probably the most expensive alcohol. Uh. Which one? The, the Albert, Albert Bichot. Yeah, Domaine du Clos. Yeah. Uh, 300. Albert Bichot, Domaine du Clos, Fantin, Grand Echeuzeau, Echeuzeau, Grand Cru. Uh, yeah, I learned French. I can barely even pronounce this myself. Oh, I love yeah. it. But yeah, it's, it's good stuff, man. Oh, it's Warren. We'll see how that yeah. case unfolds. Interesting. Yeah. Like, going to be an interesting few months. It will be. With the election always looming as well. Yeah. Uh, but yes. Yes. Uh, what is your one short comment? Ah, uh, wait. Uh, it's our favorite. Let, let 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 me let me pull it up. Yeah. Uh do you do you have yours? Uh, just basically on Reddit, which is you know we have a huge, very vibrant community on Reddit that are very excited to, to uh talk about these days. 
but my internet is not uh, working very well or letting me load it very easily. Mm. Uh, let me see on my computer. Ah, okay, yes. Uh, basically, the oh, my Reddit is really not loading, man. Is yours loading? Yeah. Okay. So, you yours? Yeah, mine... Mine is a, a post by uh, Original Goat One, mm-hmm. uh, who's long time co- commenter. Kind of asked us, "Oh, would we consider a Yalabad guest, which is the penny farthing rider Rembrandt Strujik?" Yeah. Um, they did point out that you know after accusing Rembrandt Strujik of being a colonial cyclist, mm-hmm. I mean we, we were just joking lah, yeah, which was on the podcast about the car free, right? We yeah. were saying that you know, he was decked out um, and all, but. Turns out that yeah, he's a um, he's a uh, he <laughs> made the news. There are a few profiles written on him. I'm looking at the one on uh, Yahoo News. Mm. Uh, basically, yeah, like um, he wanted to raise awareness of cycling. He's a Dutch guy, mm. uh, and uh, yeah, uh, interesting lah. Like seems like a like a really nice guy. Like uh, he did reflect. Uh, he did admit that there are challenges. Mm. He doesn't dare go on the streets of Singapore because there are too many cars. It's too dangerous. Yeah. Um. And yeah, he's just a cycling enthusiast, lah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, his journey began in London. He relocated to Singapore last September. Mm. Um. And yeah, it's just something he 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 liked to do, lah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I think it's uh interesting, lah. I think I I think we we're just kidding about the whole the whole colonial thing. So don't think yeah. it too, too seriously, guys. Yeah, yeah. So apparently, like, uh, wait, is the bicycle itself 145 years old? Yes, yes. Oh, so if you read up shit. the thing, it's very interesting that even getting it shipped to Singapore was a challenge and he had to go through KL, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure if KL. you rode the penny farting from KL to Singapore. That would be fucking epic uh, if you went uh, to the causeway. Oh, so he was a former bicycle mechanic. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, oh, cool, uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so well done. Uh, uh, Rembrandt Struik. Sure. Cool, yeah. Cool. Uh, my one should comment is from Reddit, uh, Nayat Cat. We were uh, reacting to our last episode about whether Singapore is really the happiest country uh, in Asia, right? Mm-hmm. That was our debate. Um, and then we talked about uh, Singapore compared to the Scandinavian countries. So Nayat Cat says, I'm one of those currently living in the Scandinavian countries, mm-hmm. but not in the capital city. Been there for a year, so won't claim to be an expert. But here are some observations. Uh, work-life balance is a real thing here and fathers get pretty long paternity leave. And it's very common to see fathers out with the kids on weekdays buying groceries and also, um, you know, um, they they say, I mean, this night cat says that there's no pressure to reply emails at night or work over time. And uh, yeah, so from an employee point of view, it's it's great, but I think it also makes the country less competitive. Mm. Interesting. Uh, and they talk about the um, that there are very, very few really low income or really, really ultra rich and I think you mentioned about how in those countries, actually, the people don't like to flaunt mm. their wealth so much. And this is corroborated here. Uh, but but Nayak Kat also says a blue-collar worker can still easily raise a family of kids. Education is free. You know, healthcare, there's co-payment. Uh, and and, and uh, it, it does make it less stressful uh, because there's always a safety net. Uh, and, and also, think when it comes to rent, uh, there are rent controls in place, uh, right? Um, and then remember, I think we talked about um, people in Scandinavia going kayaking midweek as well. Yeah, and it says that that's more likely because uh, meeting up for meals and all is very expensive there. Oh. Went to Singapore. So the example is like Singapore, you can meet and eat prata, five dollars, yeah. whatever, easy, right? Yeah. Over there, you meet for meals, expensive. So people end up just let's go outdoors and do something together. It's uh. free. So that makes sense. And uh, but I think last last but not least, most interesting is that he says that. Um, uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, this night cat wants to move back to Singapore because I can't stand the weather or the food here. <laughs> so I mean, ultimately, it just boils down to that. The thing that the very thing that we complain weather about the weather the is a uh, much more positive for you know people who actually live in Scandinavia. Because it, it gets cold as shit there, right? Yeah, for most of the year. Yeah, yeah, and then the food, yeah, la, like Singapore food is like unbeatable. Uh, and the price, you know, yeah. like what you said. Five dollars just to meet up with your it's friends. Unbeatable. Easy. So yeah, I mean, I love these kind of things when people we know that people who are living overseas are listening to this and yeah. they're able to give us an underground perspective, lah. Oh, solid, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Uh, all right, cool. cool. What about your one shop thing, man? Um, my one shop thing is I think it's it's some something that I did mention before, but it's the ongoing, um, the Rock is mm. on his way to WrestleMania, lah, right? Mm. And basically, what you're seeing now is probably The Rock's last 
uh, legit run as a wrestler in the WWE. La. And he's the best thing is that he's absolutely killing it. Mm. He's embracing the role of a villain like no other. And a lot of people are excited because he's even saying a lot of uh, non-PG jokes. You know, he makes jokes about, uh, he makes sexual innuendo jokes, jokes about uh, Mormons in Utah, for example. And he's just, and writing songs and singing about like Memphis and, and oh, very so inappropriate he, things. He recently had another one you can watch on. Yeah, yeah. He uh, went, he appeared in Memphis and I think last night he appeared. So every time he comes on, it's just watching. They, they don't, he doesn't wrestle at all. He just comes on and just says some things. And it's always awesome. Like, it's always funny. And it's always amazing how he's embracing the role of okay, I'm going to play the villain this round, but I also know that I'm probably the most popular person in the world right now. And how do I balance it? Uh, uh, so he's doing something very interesting here where he people are cheering for him, but they want him to be nasty to them. Uh, you know? So it's it's just an amazing thing to watch. And uh, I'm enjoying it because I know that, I mean, he's what? In his late, mid to late 50s already, right? Yeah. Or something. Or maybe early 50s, if anything. Let me see, yeah. Uh, the rock age. He is 51. 51. So he's at that age now where I think he can still put up a good performance like when he actually wrestles. But it's probably that that last hurrah already. After 51. this, it's downhill. It's really downhill already. La. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just enjoying whatever little moments there are. Uh, just little nugget is that they also they also brought back his like, uh, like people have analyzed it to no end la, and it's quite nerdy when you go into it. But mm. He has had a lot of uh, different types of entrance music over his career, and they brought back the entrance music from the days when he was like uh, the Hollywood rock, like the bad guy rock, and just people that it, internet just went nuts about it because it was just so cool to you know reference that from the early two thousands and and uh, and all that. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So yeah, the uh, last few. I mean, WrestleMania is coming up ready, so. Um, we're on the streets like, he's filming a movie after Wrestlemania so it'll be Wrestlemania and then after that you won't see him for a, a while again nah. shit 51 so, nah. just gotta enjoy it while he's still doing it nah. solid so uh, speaking of like uh, legends in the game mm. who are still creating epic shit uh, my one show thing is a trailer for Conan O'Brien's new show called Must Go Ah, yes. like have you watched his remotes before you have I right? have yeah so now this is a show where he goes to like uh, Norway um, Ireland uh, and a bunch of other countries and just immerses himself in the culture. Yeah. And I think he's also joined by like um his longtime comedy partner in crime, Jordan Schlensky. Mm. Uh, and it's just hilarious. Uh, the trailer looks awesome. And I mean, I, I know his remote started off on YouTube. Then there was a show that was on Netflix. Mm. Uh, and then now this is for Max, la, yeah. which is, uh, I guess, HBO Max. Uh, and yeah, it looks awesome. It's and hilarious. He doesn't host any anything already. Like. In, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does he have a show anymore? Not no. Anymore. I think he has, also his, he podcast. has his podcast. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's this. awesome like, because like he's kind of reinvented himself and he's still my all-time favorite uh, late night show host. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, he's just awesome. Like. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 2018, he has a co- Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Mm. Uh, and yeah, it's it's great. So is, is it out already? No, it's coming out 18. 18th, uh, wait. The trailer came out 18, uh, six days ago and it uh, is streaming on 18th April. Got it. It looks awesome. Okay. Conan O'Brien, man. Cool. Uh, Legends. Legends. But, cool. uh, yeah, cool. Um, thanks so much for listening, everybody. Yeah. Uh, remember, if you want to work with us, check us out on ministryoffunny.com and if you want to follow us on social media. Uh, go to ministry, uh, oh, follow us on social media. Oh yeah, wherever lah. Wherever, I mean, yeah, just wherever you're, you're, wherever you're watching this, make sure to uh, follow, subscribe. So poor Elio, you tried to <laughs> poor Elio, uh, <laughs> trying to trap me there. I was like, <laughs> asking me to repeat the exact same uh, thing. But yeah, thanks for listening, everybody.